Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk about one of my favorite subjects, art books. Specifically, recent additions that I have made to my art book collection. I got a few new ones in this week and I realized that over the past six-ish months or so there had been quite a few new additions to my collection that I'm 95% sure I've never had a chance to mention in a video and I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to do so. So this is sort of going to be a bit of an art book haul, although you know, this hasn't been like a recent accumulation. It's definitely built up over time. And I really haven't had a great chance to look at most of these. So this is going to be more of a why I found this particular book interesting and decided to want to add it to my collection. So let's get into some art books. The first ones that I'm going to talk about are definitely the ones that I've had the longest, probably honestly over six months, and I've just never had a chance to talk about them. And it's actually a series of three, and they are titled Show Your Work, Steve Feel like an artist and keep going. These are definitely pretty popular books, but I feel like a lot of people don't actually realize what they are, the contents that are in them. Like, I definitely recognize the colors when I heard someone talking about the books, but I had not a great concept of what they were actually about. And so the idea is one of these involves 10 ways to share your creativity and get discovered, 10 things that nobody told you about being creative, and 10 ways to stay creative in good times and bad. So these books are definitely more along the line of like artist self-help sort of thing. I mean, having a book titled A Steal Like an Artist is possibly a little concerning to be mentioning, but the concept of that particular volume is the idea that no idea is actually 100% original and everything sort of has derived inspiration, and if you think it's original, you probably just don't understand the particular inspiration for that or the combination of inspiration for that particular thing. Yeah, there's these just really nicely bound matte finish square soft cover books. Each one is laid out in like a 10 chapter or idea format, so you could just flip through this, pick one of those ideas or chapters, and read from there. These ones aren't specifically for visual arts, they're more of just creative job sort of a prospect. You will see from some of these recent editions that I've been picking up less books about like specifically how to do things, which honestly I feel like I've sort of maxed out at this point, and a lot of the time I feel like learning how to draw things or like certain concepts along those tutorial-ish lines uh, just come across better in video form. Not all of the time, there are definitely some amazing tutorial books out there, but I also have most of the ones that I'm probably interested in in my collection already. So these books are more on the outskirts of art books or more of the surrounding concepts and ideas involving creativity and art. This next one is sort of along the lines of that as well, and it is called Find Your Artistic Voice, which again, I feel like I heard about somebody talking about this in a video and it's been so long now that I can't remember who it might have been. A lot of my art book recommendations come from YouTube videos, which I'm sure you will understand considering you're here. I feel like the title of this book is pretty self-explanatory, but it is essentially about how to figure out what you're doing with your life as an artist, which I feel like I need a reminder of far too frequently. <laughs> this one also has some really nice colorful illustrations sprinkled throughout as well. And it's another one of those books that I feel like if I'm stuck I will probably grab, flip through, just sort of knock my brain back into order, and hopefully carry on from there. For the next two I feel like at least one of them was mentioned in a comment section on one of my art book videos, but I do know for a fact that both of them are at the point that it's almost a crime to not have them in your art book collection because they are that sort of universally appreciated and recommended. The first one is one I'm pretty sure someone mentioned in a comment section and it is the Artist's Handbook of Materials and Techniques. Now this one it comes with a pretty heavy asterisk beside it because, first of all, this is a very hefty book, but this is quite possibly the most boring, just at a glance looking art book I have in my entire collection. It is like, I can't even call it like a textbook. It is like a novel. There is, I don't think, a single picture in this entire volume of how many pages? Well, I guess we're going to count the index pages in which there are a lot of. The last numbered page in this is 761. This 
I did know was not gonna necessarily be the most exciting thing that I own. But I do know that even my mom was like, oh, that is an interesting looking art book. Let's look through this. And she's like, what is this? But this is more of like the scientific aspects behind art materials. So like, it has everything about the chemicals and different paint compounds and like all of this like theory behind the scenes history sort of stuff. And so you need to really be into artwork and materials, I feel like, to be into this book. But it is super helpful. Like literally the page that I have open here is all about different pastes, specifically how to make your own book binders paste. So a very useful book to have in your studio, I feel like but also a very unexciting looking book. The other sort of cult classic you need it in your art book collection book is the Graphic Artists Guild Handbook of Pricing and Ethical Guidelines. That is a mouthful. <laughs> But this is definitely one of those ones where I always sort of considered getting it and then I wasn't sure how useful I would find it, but it kept on getting recommended and I just sort of bit the bullet and figured it was about time that this got added to the collection. I did also feel like it made more sense now though because I am selling significantly more artwork and original stuff as a part of my job, which wasn't always the case. Again, sort of one of those obviously titled books. This is all about how to price your work. The general prices that you would see regarding certain projects and tasks. So a very, very useful and important book to have around. If you're any sort of a creative freelancer, I believe this includes a lot more than just sort of the visual art aspect, like photography. What do we have in here? Illustration, greeting card and retail product illustration, fashion and lifestyle, website development, different product design, surface pattern design. So as you can see, a lot of very specific information for specific jobs, which honestly I kind of want to go now and read through all of this to see what kind of very specific creative jobs that I've probably never even considered as an option that's listed in here. It has everything about pricing, hourly rates, what to charge, copyright, very important stuff, especially if you are selling your work online. Something that I have just noticed in the comparative flat fees for surface pattern design in specific home fashions bedding products, but it actually has the various rates listed out in Canadian dollars, which I would assume is due to the geographic region in which I purchased this book from. But that's really cool that presumably they have the rates listed based on geographic region, which I would assume is also not even the currency conversion, but just rates in that sort of geographical area. So that is super helpful because I was ready to have like Google open conversion converting all of this currency every five seconds. This is already definitely a book that I would recommend you pick up if you are into selling your artwork or services in any way. Definitely probably should have picked this up sooner, but it's here now and I'm sure I'm going to be using this as a reference all of the time. Another one that sort of flew under the radar that I've had for a while but does sort of correspond with that last book is Art Inc. And this is sort of subtitled as The Essential Guide for Building Your Career as an Artist. I like having books like this around because I find it particularly helpful to look through when not necessarily that I'm feeling stuck but just feel like I need a bit of a refresh especially if you're like a one-man show like me just reading something in a book even if it's a very seemingly obvious concept just reminding yourself of said possibly very obvious concept can be extremely helpful. But I'm sure this book also has lots of concepts and strategies that I've possibly never even thought about. It's another very useful book to reference. The next two books are actually books about color, but they are The Secret Lives of a Color and Werner's Nomenclature of Colors, probably butchering that. Both of these I feel like are quite well-known books. This one I definitely kept on seeing and hearing about in various videos, like even random ones, and it's like at this point what do you doing? Just buy the thing. And I'm sure not everyone is interested in owning books about literal color, but other than I'm sure incredibly fascinating histories of the pigments and how we got to the paint colors that everyone uses today. But specifically I bought these because my mom and I are constantly having to name product colors and palettes in my store, which the palettes are particularly difficult because they are one of a kind and so we have to come up with a new name 
every single time and we're kind of running out of ideas. And so I thought having these books that probably talk about very specific colors quite beautifully could be incredibly helpful for us. <laughs> the Secret Lives of Color is definitely along that more historical aspect, explaining the reasoning and history behind the various colors and pigments. So that alone I would personally find quite fascinating to read through and the spine is literally a rainbow. Each entry is laid out with the color listed at the top and then the history or any information regarding that color. So this one is Prussian blue, which is one of my favorite paint colors to use. And there is a quite lengthy, there's a three page entry for that one. I know a lot of these are just two pages about how the color was first manufactured, where the color comes from, what is used to create that color. Tons more information, but very fascinating stuff. And this one, which I'm not going to attempt to say again, has a very lengthy history behind it. There's a lot of history on how this book was originally made. It was first published in 1814. So quite the classic here. <laughs> if you're someone that's interested in more of the historical or scientific aspects behind art supplies and that sort of thing, then those might be a couple of interesting additions for you. The last couple of books definitely fall under more of the category of inspiration for me. The first one is The Art of Castlevania, specifically The Art of the Animated Series, which I love the show, but I also really love the art style. Honestly, it would probably be one of those things that even if I had ever watched a single second of the show, I probably would have still bought the art book because the style is so up my street. It is an anime, but the style is just this really nice, gothic-y, still fairly realistic style, which is what I'm specifically very drawn towards. Here we have my fave, Carmilla, which I'm sure you will no surprise if you've been around for a while. I've drawn her a couple of times. I definitely painted her in fake blood a few years back. Yeah, she's popped up a few times on this channel. Striga is also great and would definitely be the one that I would decide to cosplay, which I honestly kind of did have seriously consider making her bottle armor. But it also has all of the beautiful background paintings and landscapes, which again, super up my style street. If you like the show, you're obviously going to like this art book. It has all of the character turnarounds, the different costume design aspects, all of that good stuff that you get in an art of book now generally, which I am so grateful that now there are so many different shows and stuff that put out art of books. Just a really gorgeous, well put together art book that I would highly recommend if you are into the show and or art style. And the last art book is the Tribute to a Star Wars art book. This art book I feel like sort of got swept under the rug in terms of Star Wars art book promotion, which sucks because it's a really cool book. This book is sort of a companion project to the Star Wars Vision series, which if you don't know, the series is a bunch of miniature stories, like a single episodes done by various anime studios and it's super cool and so this book is a book of various Star Wars art book done by I believe they're all manga artists. Yeah it's this compilation book of a bunch of various artists work and they're super gorgeous pieces. It's just really cool to see all of these different Star Wars characters and poster designs and stuff in a more stylized art style and different art styles at that. I really love compilation books where you can see a variety variety of different artists work. If you're a fan of Star Wars and also really love manga or anime style artwork, then I would highly recommend picking up this book. And those are all of my recent art book acquisitions. As always, I'd love to know your art book recommendations in the comment section, even though I probably shouldn't be buying any more books right now, but one can never have too many art books in their wish list. And that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.